We have here a 2014 Volkswagen Tiguan. It has the 2.0 liter TSI engine, uh, CCT letter code, and the customer's complaint is the check engine light's on. I've already scanned it. It's got EVAP codes. And so let's go through the diagnostic process once more. I have uh, done other videos with a um, uh, EVAP related trouble codes. So you can look up in the corner there for those two other videos. And let's see what this one needs. PO442, EVAP emission control system, small leak. And down here, PO456, EVAP system, very small leak. Okay, I'm inside the car and we're going to run the basic settings test. I need to start it. And we'll go into VACOM, do engine, basic settings. We can use the drop down box in order to find leak, the leak diagnostic pump. And then up here we click on. And this, will sh this shows right here that we're doing the system test. It says the test is on because we clicked on. And I'm going to leave this running the whole time it does this. Now, if you were in here in the car with me, you would hear the leak diagnostic pump running. It's going, and it, it's pressurizing the tank. Um, if your N80 solenoid, the purge solenoids on, on the front of the car is stuck open, or leaking, then that would the engine would be sucking this pressure out of the tank, and so it would never complete this test, and that would be a huge leak. That would be a large leak. Other leaks that you've seen in my other videos, the N80 valve was in uh, flipped around backwards. The N80 valve was flipped around backwards, and see here. This says testing. And the other leak that I had was the um, so the customer had installed a fuel pump themselves and they didn't really get the fuel pump tight enough so that was causing the leak there. Uh, that just flashed but it still says open. It's, it's flashing closed just a bit. And now the test is complete. If you look right here it says test complete and it says system not okay. Uh, and the result is a small leak. So this is at least reproducible. So maybe with a smoke machine, we can find this problem. We'll just put some pressure into the tank uh, and see, see if we can tell where it's leaking from. Or we might use the, this system to pressurize the tank and see what happens. Now, I don't see anything wrong here, but I don't really want to touch that because if that's the source of the leak, I don't want to make the problem go away to where I find it impossible to diagnose it. I believe the leak detection pumps in here uh, on the Jettas and other Beetles and cars that I've worked on, it's been there. I looked up in there from underneath the car, and I thought I saw a charcoal canister, so I think it's there. We would have to remove the wheel and the fender liner to get to that. So I wanted to show another quick test that you could do. And um, obviously this is our N80 purge valve, and we could remove this clamp and see if it's leaking any vacuum. And we're going to do that, but we're also going to run the, we're also going to clamp this off right here, and that will eliminate its ability. It will mimic this being closed like it should be during the test, and we'll run that test, at, that basic settings test again. And if uh, the problem then goes away, we can pretty much say that's our N80 valve leaking. Okay, I've just went ahead and pulled this hose off. We ran the test with the, we ran the basic settings test with this clamped off and it did not solve our issue. I pulled this off just because it's easy to do and there is no vacuum leaking through. So our N80 probably isn't our problem. <clears throat> All right, in the other videos you've seen me clamp off this hose here. This is a hard plastic hose and I can't clamp that off because it would break it. So what I've done is I've removed it and I'm going to cap this off with something, maybe just my thumb, and run the test again and see what happens. My wireless VADCOM is missing right now. So we're underneath the car and we'll go to basic settings. Drop down. 
and leak diagnostic pump and on. You see it's running and I'm going to cap this off with my thumb. I can kind of feel some pressure building up in there. This eliminates a significant portion of the capacity of the system. So usually if uh, the leak is beyond this tube right here, then the test will be short. And maybe the test is over here. Nope, still says test on. And if you look there, It has completed the test, and it says system OK. Now as I release my thumb here, now as I release my thumb here, you see there, there's pressure buildup. So that means this area is sealed. The leak has got to be beyond here, and this area is beyond, uh, which means towards the fuel pump or towards the fuel tank. Now I guess I need to do one more test before I start looking at the fuel pump. I'm going to turn my camera upside down here so you can read this. And what it says is, tighten until one click or mill may turn on. See owner's manual. So I'm going to run the test one more time and I'm going to spray some soapy water around here to see if this is our leak. I really need my wireless VADCOM because then I could have this over by the car. So the test should be running and it's pressurizing the system. Got me a uh, bottle of soapy water here. I really don't see anything around there. I've got the smoke machine hooked to the boost box. Okay, since my leak seems to be from here on up towards the tank, I thought I would put some smoke in there and see if I can see anything. And right off the bat, I'm seeing it from right there. Now, I did purposely didn't open that because I didn't want to disturb it or fix it if it was loose. And let me lower this car down some. not seeing where it's coming from. It probably is coming from the cap. Definitely nothing from under here. So I guess it's time to tinker with the cap. So this is the type that, if anything, that made it worse. It's the type that just has one click. Oh, you can see the cause right there. There's a split in the gasket right there. There's a split in the gasket right there. Maybe, just maybe, there's a gasket available for this.
I can say that's pretty conclusive with the splits in the gasket and the leaking smoke from there. That's our problem. Now, here's the thing for the naysayers. I should have checked this first, and certainly, uh, in hindsight, probably should have. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to charge the customer a huge diagnosis fee. I'm basically just going to charge him for pulling this wheel, and no labor charge other than that. And uh, but we certainly, as professionals, we have to know that's the problem. And if we if this is loose and we tighten it, um, then we've solved the problem. We can't diagnose it. So we almost need to go through the diagnostic steps to be sure, unless as a, the customer just wants to change the, the cap. And, and I think if they want to do that, they should do that themselves. Um, but we now know a good visual inspection, just pulling this off and looking at the seal, we can see the splits in it. We'll find out if there's a seal available or whether we have to get a cap, and uh, we'll let you know what we find. We did receive our gas cap on the Tiguan. There's the part number if you need it. I tried really hard to get just this seal right here, but I couldn't get one. It would be nice if somebody would tool up and make that since it seems to be a, a item that's going to fail. I can't do this with one hand. I'll get a tool and put that on there. Strap installed. Fixed. Okay, I'm inside this Tiguan that we just put the gas cap on. And we are going to run the basic settings test. I already cleared codes. I forgot to record that part of it. But we're going to run the basic settings test here and see if it passes. Going down to leak diagnostic pump. Click on. You can see there it says system test, test on. And I can hear the pump doing its job back there, pump, and it makes a little noise like thump, 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 thump. And that went really fast. It says test complete, system okay. So I'm very confident that's going to be fixed. I am going to go road test the vehicle and make sure. The code doesn't reoccur, and I might even run this test one more time when I get back from the road test. But we'll update you after that. So I road tested this Tiguan and ran the basic settings test again, and the basic settings test passed, and uh, it did not trigger those trouble codes again. So it looks like the gas cap was a good fix. So I want to talk about the diagnostic process on this. There will be a naysayer who's, who will say, I should have just opened the cap, looked at it, and then sold them a cap. And I totally agree with that. But I've been to training seminars over and over again, and they say if you loosen the cap or tighten the cap and the problem goes away, you'll never diagnose it. You'll be calling your customer saying, I don't know what the heck's going on. And I agree with that philosophy right up until the point where now we're seeing some of them that you can visually tell that the seal is no good. When you see those cracks in the seal, that's enough evidence, probably shouldn't charge a diagnosis fee, probably shouldn't do nothing but change a cap and tell the customer to hope for the best. Maybe even tell them to change the cap. FYI, I couldn't get a cap in the aftermarket for this. Um, there may be some available, but I couldn't get one. I had to buy one from the dealer. So why did I make a video on this? So that uh, everybody can crucify me on the internet saying I'm charging a diagnosis fee for something stupid when a visual inspection would have done just fine? Here's why. Number one, the diagnostic process is important, and the shop does need to be able to guarantee that it's going to fix it. Um, the n valve could have been the problem. You saw that in one of my other videos. The gas cap seal, I'm sorry, the gas tank seal could have been the problem. You saw that in one of my other videos. So here's the other reason. You're going to love this. 
my EVAP videos are one of my biggest money makers on YouTube. People watch them because they get those codes a lot. So people watch those videos and I get clicks and views and, and I get paid accordingly. I don't know if you know that. People on YouTube get paid. So here's another EVAP video for you. If you like this video or you learned anything from it, be sure and click the like button. And if you want to donate to the continued production of these videos, find the donate icon on my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. And if you want to watch some more of my videos, there'll be one here. And watch one right here. And don't forget to subscribe. I appreciate you watching my videos.